When it's two of you versus one enemy fighter, it's not always guaranteed that you'll win. You could get in each other's way or have a friendly fire incident. The bandit might even get one of you. Then it's just one versus one. So how do you maximize your odds of winning? We'll answer that question in this video. If you haven't already, I recommend you watch the previous videos in this series on air combat maneuvering. We're going to do everything we discussed in those videos, only this time you'll be in the cockpit. At the end of this video, we'll also go over how to use a free downloadable mission for DCS that does everything we need for this exercise. That way, you don't need to create anything in the mission editor. Our scenario begins with an unidentified aircraft at a known location and altitude. In this case, our flight was directed to intercept an unidentified aircraft overflying this X-shaped airfield near the coast at an altitude of 13,000 feet. The controller that's been guiding us tells us we're merged with the bogey. This is as close as the controller can get us. The rest is up to you and your wingman. So as a flight, we need to start searching the skies. At the same time, we want to make it more difficult for this bogey to spot both of us. If it turns out this aircraft is hostile, we want at least one of us to be able to surprise him. We do that by taking up a tactical formation like line abreast, which allows us to space out and make it harder visually to acquire both members of our flight. The Air Force calls this denying the bandit tally two, which just means not letting him spot both aircraft. Ideally, you don't want him spotting either one of you, but as long as he's unaware of one of you, then you have an advantage over him. The important part here is the vertical split. You want to use every bit of that 2,000 feet to hide your presence, especially if you can get some terrain or the sun behind you. Here's what that tactical formation will look like from inside the cockpit. This fighter is one mile away and 2,000 feet above us. This is what that would look like at 2,000 feet below our altitude. Denying a tally 2 isn't all that a tactical formation is good for. Another important benefit of a wide formation is that unlike a narrow formation like fighting wing, the bogey can't easily put his lift vector on both of you. He's going to have to make a choice. If the bogey turns toward one of you, then that leaves an opening for the other to maneuver onto the bogey's rear quarter. You need to make sure you have plenty of turning room for that first. A tactical formation will help with that. You can find more details in this video on tactical formations. Once the bogey is spotted by one member of the flight, it needs to be communicated to the other with a descriptive radio call. That call would go like this. Eagle 2, bogey right 2, 2 miles, level. In this scenario, the flight lead is letting Eagle 2 know that their bogey is to the right at 2 o'clock, at a distance of 2 miles, and it's at approximately their altitude. Two miles is at that visual limit where a fighter-sized aircraft is a tiny, easy-to-lose speck. It's also not very far in air combat. Two nautical miles is about 12,000 feet, or slightly larger than a turn diameter in BFM. Once you look away, it's nearly impossible to reacquire a fighter at this distance. So you'll want to get everyone in the flight looking at our bogey. This descriptive communication should be enough to get Eagle 2 looking at the right place to find the bogey. If not, then the pilot who can see the bogey should continue giving updates until the other pilot has tally. Once Eagle 2 sees the bogey, he'll let Lead know by saying Eagle 2 tally. For a bogey that's at a different altitude, you would say high or low, and as an option, add an approximate number of degrees. So if a bogey looked to be 20 degrees above the horizon, you would say 20 high, or just high. The descriptive call can optionally be accompanied by a directive call to turn towards the bogey. In the last video, we used the call of Eagle 2 hard right to get the wingman into a high G, energy sustaining turn to the right. Not only does this get the wingman pointed in the right direction, but it also builds some more separation between the two fighters. This directive to turn isn't always required. If you find your bogey in the forward hemisphere of your flight and need to build up turning room, you can use a bracket. It looks like this. Both fighters pull away from each other and then turn back in towards the bogey. What this does is create turning room between the fighters and it also makes it more apparent if the bogey decides to focus on one of the fighters. 
it's a very simple and powerful tactic. Robert Shaw describes the bracket like this in his book Fighter Combat. Variations on the bracket attack are also the bread and butter of loose deuce. So it's a good idea to get familiar with the bracket. A bracket game plan can be briefed ahead of time, or it can be initiated by the flight lead with the radio call. In this example, it would sound like this, Eagle 2, bracket right. Whenever you see another aircraft clearly showing bias towards one member of the flight, that's called leaning on that fighter. If needed, you would descriptively communicate that as bogey is leaning on Eagle 1. You can use the visual cues we learned about in BFM to identify a bogey that's leaning on you. An approaching bogey will have a small profile and very little LOS movement across the canopy. From the other fighter's point of view, there will be a lot more LOS movement in the direction of the wingman. That's how you can tell who is being leaned on. Now that we see the bogey is clearly focused on lead, we can set our ACM roles with the radio call. That call from lead would sound like this. Eagle 1 engaged. The ACM rolls are not set until an acknowledgement is sent. That acknowledgement from the wingman would go like this. Eagle 1 press. With that call, the wingman has now taken on the responsibility of being the support fighter. In a bracket game plan, you not only want to build separation horizontally, but vertically too. Here's how the Air Force describes it. The support fighter should float his formation out to visual limits with the vertical stack off the horizon to deny the bandit tally to. The desired formation is 1 to 1.5 nautical miles lateral and 2,000 to 3,000 foot vertical separation. With ACM rolls set, we're ready to act if this turns into a fight. But the fight hasn't started yet because we don't know for sure if this is a hostile aircraft. This is something that can happen in the real world scenario. A set of rules of engagement will be set out which acts like a checklist to determine when it's okay to shoot. A lot of times it's not enough to have a negative response from a contact. It could be a civilian aircraft that's not monitoring the radio, or a friendly aircraft with a malfunctioning IFF system. Either way, the rules of engagement could stipulate that a visual identification is needed before taking a shot. So we need to continue into a merge to get that visual ID on the bogey. With Eagle 1 as the engaged fighter, it's going to be his responsibility to make the call. Here at the merge, we now clearly see that this bogey is not only carrying our adversary's markings, but he's armed too. That's enough to satisfy the rules of engagement. Now we need to communicate that fact. In ACM, you can call a merge and a VID separately, but they can happen at the same time too. So it's okay to combine them like this. Eagle 1 merged VID hostile. With that VID of a hostile aircraft, we now have authorization to shoot. It also means we'll refer to that aircraft as a bandit instead of a bogey from now on. Now, if Eagle 2 was maneuvering into the bandit's control zone in anticipation of a VID hostile call, then he would be in a position for a shot right away. That's one of the support fighter's responsibilities. You may be wondering, how should I maneuver for the shot? The best way to do that is to follow the steps for a lead turn that we covered in this video. In this case, the bandit is treated as unaware since he's reacting to the engaged fighter, which leaves the support fighter free to maneuver on him. But we have one additional caveat to think about now. As a support fighter, we need to maintain visual with the engaged fighter in addition to keeping tally on the bandit. In a scenario where the support fighter is on the right with the bandit and engaged fighter circling to the left, this is easy. Just turn with the flow of the fight, which is called co-flow, and you can easily keep your eyes on both of them while maneuvering for a shot on the bandit. What about if you're on the left side? Then you would turn the other direction, or counter flow. This way you can keep both of them in sight without having them go across your tail, where you could potentially lose sight of one or both aircraft. However, this does present a problem. The support fighter may at some point pass in front of the bandit. That's why we always try to have an altitude split. There's no shot opportunity if you're above the bandit's wes. And there's another benefit to being at a different altitude. We need turning room for a good lead turn. Turning room doesn't just come from horizontal spacing. Vertical spacing counts too, and we get that from being at a different altitude. 
This is another reason why we go into the ACM engagement with an altitude split. You don't have to think about changing altitudes as a support fighter because you're already there. Now that we've discussed getting in a position, let's talk about taking the shot. After ensuring deconfliction with the engaged fighter, the support fighter's most important job is looking for a shot of opportunity on the bandit. There are some things here to keep in mind to help make that quick kill happen. If Eagle 2 maneuvered out here, then an easy shot at the bandit's rear quarter would be presented if the bandit turned to start a one circle fight. But what if the bandit turned the other way? Now Eagle 2 would end up in a two circle tail chase. If this happens, then Eagle 2 would now be in the most offensive position and should initiate a roll swamp with the call of Eagle 2 Engaged Offensive. But let's say the bandit chooses the one circle route. Then the wingman would get an easy rear quarter missile shot. After Eagle 2 is assured of a clear field of fire, he would call Eagle 2 Fox 2. Once the bandit is taken out, Eagle 2 will announce it by saying Eagle 2, kill bandit, right turn 15,000. That lets everybody know where the bandit was taken down. You can use other descriptive information to help pinpoint that location. This is important because there will be people on the radio net that can't see what you see. So the only way they know which bandit you fired on is through that description. Make sure it paints a clear picture for them. The last thing we'll need to do is to direct the flight to separate. This is typically the responsibility of the support fighter. The flight will be directed to a heading of 180 with the radio call of Eagle Separate 180. Watching all this in a video is helpful, but if you really want to learn it, you need to do it too. So let's go over how you can practice the ACM scenario we just covered. First, you'll need to download the ACM mission. This mission takes care of all the work needed to set up a repeatable ACM engagement for you and a friend. To add an AI controlled bogey into the game world, you'll use the radio menu. Press the backslash key, and from the menu, you select the other option using the F10 button. You will now see a list of possible bogey aircraft. Pick one that you think is a good match for you and your wingman. This will place the bogey directly over this X shaped airfield flying westbound toward the sea and at an altitude of 13,000 feet. All of the AI aircraft start with guns only. You and your friend will have rear aspect AIM-9s AIM and unlimited ammo. This might seem unfairly biased in your favor. Just remember this is a training scenario. The objective here is to learn ACM. So we're going to start with something easy. You'll also see some options in the list for wild cards. Those are for an increased level of difficulty. We'll go over what they do in the next video. For now, we want to focus on tackling our spawned AI bogey and learning the basics of ACM communication. The scenario we covered is called a high aspect bracket game plan. So it works best if we approach the bogey from a high aspect. You'll want to spawn the bogey when your flight is in the bogey's forward arc, so anywhere out here over the ocean. There's some scripting built into the mission to help with getting better at ACM. Since we want to VID the bogey before engaging, one of you will have to get close enough for a visual inspection. That means getting within half a nautical mile of the bogey. When that happens, you'll get this message in the top right letting you know the VID was successful and the fight's on. This is also your indication that the fight clock has started. Don't worry, the bandit won't shoot at you during this initial merge but he will afterwards, so take him down quick. Once you've shot down the bandit, you'll get another message telling you how long it took from the VID to the kill. This is to help you measure your progress. Over time, you'll improve at ACM with more experience, and this number should go down. After you've done at least two sets, the message will show a list of all previous times. That way, you can keep track of your progress more easily. Remember, our goal is to consistently get kills under 30 seconds. That way we minimize the amount of time the bandit has to bring in reinforcements. By default, the mission has labels turned on. This should help with spotting bogeys, but it's a training aid. Labels are just like training wheels on a bike. They're helpful for someone that's new, but eventually they have to come off. So when you're ready to move up to the next level, 
turn them off by using left shift and F10. There are multiple levels of labels, so you need to hit those buttons until they're completely gone. For this first step in the ACM, we want to focus on a few things. So let's go over what those are. Start in a good tactical formation that provides both fighters with turning room and makes it difficult for any potential bandits to get a tally too, which just means sighting both you and your wingman. You need to find the bogey with the visual scan of the area. Let your wingman know where the bogey is with the descriptive call that follows this format. Eagle 2, bogey right to, 2 miles, level. Make sure ACM rolls are set with an engaged and a press call. Rolls are not set until both calls are made. In our example, this happened before the merge, but it can happen at any time. The engaged fighter will use all the skills and tactics we covered in the BFM series. As a support fighter, you'll want to build turning room and then maneuver for a conversion turn into an offensive position on the bandit. This will often be a lead turn as covered in high aspect BFM. One thing you never want to do is the support fighters fly through the fight. Being in the middle of the action will make it difficult to take a shot and drag out the fight. We want a fast kill. So plan out your turn to get into the bandit's control zone. Remember, the engaged fighter is making the bandit's flight path predictable for you. Before a shot can be taken, you need to positively ID the bogey as hostile and make a VID hostile radio call. Lastly, after the bandit is shot down, the support fighter needs to call separate with the heading. It's also a good idea to do a quick debrief on the fight and discuss what went right and what you could do better next time. There are a few more situations we need to cover in ACM, which we'll go over in the next video. One of those is what to do if the bandit switches targets. We'll also cover some of the common pitfalls, but we want to go over these fundamentals first. Practice this setup until the radio calls become instinct. Then try out some sets with labels turned off and see how they go. We want to gradually increase the challenge until you can do all of this without assistance. It's possible to get there with practice. So check out that mission. It's a free download. And thanks for watching.